A warning that this video contains spoilers for the Marvels. It's uh, no one cares. Uh, it's uh, the spoilers in the video. If you've been lobotomized and or suffer from dementia, boy, do I have a movie recommendation for you, my friend. The Marvels. Ah, oh, yes, indeed. The Marvels. As I've mentioned previously, the answer to the question, what happens when you get someone who nobody knows, someone who nobody cares about, and someone that nobody particularly likes to star in a movie that absolutely nobody asked for? And let's start by congratulating Marvel for single-handedly ending all movie piracy by creating a film so damp no one could even be bothered to steal it. Hey, got him. Now, the reviews for the Marvels have been... Uh, uninspiring, to say the least. It's been a pretty tepid, middle-of-the-road response, which, if I'm being honest, is much better than I expected and far better than this movie deserves. However, the box office performance has aligned slightly more closely with my experience of this movie. It's actually been the worst opening weekend in MCU history. And the headlines... they've been pretty rough. <laughs> So, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to actually watch the movie, something that the majority of the planet decided not to do, wisely. And with the magic of video editing, we'll cut to just after I've seen the movie. What a terrible movie! <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding, I've already seen it. Let's break it down. <laughs> But just before we get into the rest of the video, a quick shout out to the channel's main sponsor, which is Cyberpower PC UK, who built this gorgeous behemoth that you see behind me. If you are in the market for a performance gaming PC and or desktop, check the top link in the description where my friends at Cyberpower are running some Black Friday deals. You can choose from a selection of pre-built or you can completely spec a PC to your exact needs and or aesthetic desires. If you happen to go for one just like mine, just know that I will come and find you and replace all of your cables with cocktail sausages. So. Don't try and steal my swag. A huge thank you to Cyberpower for sponsoring this channel. And back to the video. And the movie kicks off with the main antagonist. If you wanted a more detailed description of said antagonist, Marvel should have tried a bit harder to actually write one. There really isn't too much to say about her other than the fact that she looks like an extra from a late 2000s Little Wayne music video. I know what you're thinking. Very threatening. So, evil purple magic hammer lady is on the moon and she's found herself a mysterious bracer. And a bracer is like a bracelet, but longer. I think. The only thing is, this bracer shouldn't be mysterious, as it is actually the sister to the bracer that Miss Marvel wears. But only about 17 and a half people actually watch that series, so for now it will remain mysterious. And it would appear that Marvel are well aware of this fact, as just to give people a little nudge, the very following shot after this one was of the bracelet upon Ms. Marvel's wrist, who is sat in her room drawing pictures of superheroes. Because why bother helping people when it's much easier to draw pictures of people who help people? It's a tough job, but someone's got to do it. And then we see Captain Marvel herself, portrayed by the, thankfully, one and only Brie Larson, who is as compelling as she is... stable. That's right, Captain Marvel is back and better than ever if you could consider now owning a cat to be worthy character development. Yeah. Now you will spend a lot of the time watching this movie thinking, man, even I could have probably written that scene a little bit better. The, uh, you know, I had a bit of zest here and there, but the dialogue is... The dialogue is intelligible. And that's about all I've got to say, really. It was written. The dialogue was written would be an accurate statement. And if you've got dementia, boy, have I got a movie recommendation for you, my friend. The Marvels. Now, one of the biggest problems I have with this movie is Brie Larson. I find it near impossible to forget that it's her when I'm watching Captain Marvel on screen. To me, they are just one in the same person, and I just can't help that I don't want to watch this person feeling. You might think me childish because of this, but... It is just the truth. I have a friend who refuses to watch anything with Benedict Cumberbatch in it because of the way that he looks. And I personally don't like to watch anything with Brie Larson in because of the way that she is. It is what it is. I think that we as people should be able to separate art from artist, but I, I just cannot help, I can't rewire my brain to not associate Captain Marvel with weird rants. On top of all of this, am I saying that I hate white dudes? 
No, I'm not. Cringeworthy interviews. I did my stunts because I thought that that's what everyone did. Uh, and then... Tom, Tom Cruise over here? No, I'll be the first me, not the next Tom Cruise. Thank Ooh. you very much. Well, wow. you know, I mean. And of course, the, the crazy eyes. <laughs> ah, it's just. So unsettling. So Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, and Monica Rambeau all control light in one way or another. And now whenever one of them uses their powers, they all swap places with one another. Except the times when they use their powers and they don't swap places. How it's determined when they swap places, I, I, I'm not too sure. And how it's determined who swaps places with who, I, you know what, just don't bother asking these questions because you will not find any answers. Like most Marvel productions, the less you think about it, the more fun you will have. And even then, it's questionable how much fun you'll have. I can't promise that you will have fun watching this. In fact, I, I can almost guarantee that you won't. And I tell you what, if you've got dementia, boy, do I have a movie recommendation for you. There is a moment in one of the fight scenes where Captain Marvel sucker punches this guy in the face and as he's fallen to the floor, she volleys him into a group of oncoming enemies. And I've written in my notes here, <clears throat> I liked that bit. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. Yeah, it's just, well put, mate. Nice one. There was also a moment where the big bad creates a, a rift in the atmosphere of the planet that the Skrull live on. And then it cuts to Captain Marvel, who has stood with the leader of the Skrull in the middle of all this panic. Everyone's running past in this, you know, everyone's gonna die. It's the end of the world. And, it, you know, we get this close-up shot of Carol Danvers and you think, goodness, something heroic is about to happen and or be said. It zooms in and she just says to the leader of the scroll, I think you, you, want, you probably want to think about leaving uh, this planet. All right, yeah, cool. Uh, like, no shit, Captain Marvel. What, what, uh, the atmosphere that we need to live is currently being sucked through a giant purple space anus. And what, you think we're just going to sit around and see how it goes? Well, you, with this kind of input, you could be a, you could be a Sky Sports news presenter. Unparalleled levels of insight. Thank you, Captain Marvel. Very cool. Then there is a moment in this movie when the trio all put on these headset things in order to rewatch their past memories. Okay, it could be cool if implemented well, he says sarcastically, knowing that that's not the case. But the problem is the memories themselves. They are just shots from earlier on in the movie that we've already seen. No new perspectives, no new camera angles, no continuations. So we're already recycling shots less than an hour into the movie. And two, these recycled shots, they kept some of the third person camera angles. So some of the shots are not even from their first person perspectives and therefore wouldn't be memories that any of them have. Like some of you might think, ah, oh, big deal. Like what's, you know, it's just a camera angle. But the thing is, we're talking the very, the very, very basics of movie making here. This is first semester stuff. Forgetting or not caring enough about the audience and their perspective whilst watching is one of the most lazy and or incompetent mistakes to have in a movie that costs far north of quarter of a billion dollars. Look, I'm not expecting highbrow when I walk into a Marvel movie, but I do expect filmmaking fundamentals. And you know, yeah, sure, look at most of Wes Anderson's movies. He's constantly breaking the illusion of the invisible camera with unusual camera and perspective shifts, but that's an artistic decision. It's intentional. The same can definitely not be said for the Marvels. The, the octopus cat thing, it keeps swallowing and then throwing up large objects. And this is supposed to be some continual joke that runs throughout the entire movie. Can someone please tell Marvel that CGI animals are just not that funny anymore? It's, it's, it's like the goats from Love and Thunder all over again. <laughs> also, can we talk about Captain Marvel's ship in this movie? Okay, number one, it looks like a hamster in a sock. So in other words, not very cool. And two, it's called the Hoopity. Why is it called the Hoopity? They also made a Lego set for it because, I mean, of course they did. Uh, the reviews on the Lego site are all saying that it's way too expensive for the amount of pieces that you get, which is funnily enough, 420. <laughs> what, Lego and Disney? overcharging their customers. I refuse to believe that these giant, morally and creatively questionable corporations would ever do anything to rip their customers off. And now onto one of the most ridiculous aspects of this movie, the, the Marvels, the trio, whatever, whatever you want to call them. They go to a planet and on this planet, there are aliens. Most of these aliens look like humans. 
some of them not so much. It's kind of a it's kind of a mix mash kind of thing. Now these aliens technically speak English, but they only understand if you sing, and they only communicate through dancing and singing in English. Now I'm <laughs> now I'm saying this out loud for the first time. I am beginning to realize just how ridiculous that is. Remember the days of movie spoofs like uh, like scary movie? Uh, yeah, this scene feels like something out of a Marvel satire movie. A musical planet where everyone dances and sings. Real really. I mean <laughs> <laughs> what what on earth is going on at Disney Marvel? Also, I know that Monica Rambeau has powers now, but there's a scene where she falls thousands of feet directly onto her face and she just gets up and walks it off. There's another where Nick Fury and Kamala's family crash land down to earth in a spaceship that has no means of slowing down, by the way. And when they impact earth, the cr it leaves like a foot crater and they're all just fine. The spaceship's fine, the ground, for the most part, is fine. And they just get out. Everyone's made of plasticine and magic. There are just no stakes anymore. That's not fun. And just when you think it can't get any stupider than that, we're starting to approach the climax of the movie. Now, the spaceship, or the space station, that Nick Fury has been hiding out on, obviously has you know, hundreds if not thousands of operatives working upon it. And there comes a time in the movie where they have to evacuate the whole place. The only problem is there isn't enough active escape pods. So how do they fit all of these workers into so few escape pods? Well, the answer is they get a whole bunch of cats that have just hatched out of eggs that just happen to appear on the ship and they get the cats to swallow members of the crew to fit them in because obviously a cat is smaller than a person. So this is a real actual plotline in a real big budget mainline Marvel movie. <laughs> what? what the hell is going on? Oh, and I didn't even mention the fact that during this whole scene, they're playing the song Memory from the musical Cats. Memory all alone in the moonlight. Stop, Not stop. So okay. And don't even get me started on the ending. So, you know, th there's a giant hole that's been ripped in reality that's now separating the reality that we know and another one. And uh, the only way of sealing this hole back up is if uh, Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel inject Monica Rambeau with their. I don't know, female empowerment, and she then uses that to seal it up. The only, the caveat being that she can only do it from the other side of the hole, so that when she does seal it, she'll be stuck on the other side, you know, within the other reality. Why she can't do it from the other side, I, I, I have no idea. Well, I mean, I think I do. It's because if she did do it successfully from the other side, there wouldn't be the... Uh, uh, the tie-in that we see in the post credit scene, which is where she wakes up, and we now see the introduction of the X-Men again, and also her mom. That's cool. And then, just before you think it couldn't get any more exciting, they also tease a collaboration between Miss Marvel and uh, the girl from Hawkeye. I, I did watch Hawkeye. What's her name? Um, something Bishop. The girl from... Either a TV show or a movie with those two in is covered. Great, that's right. That's very cool. Very, very cool. And I tell you what, if you've got dementia, boy, do I have a movie recommendation for you. There isn't really a plot. I, I couldn't possibly care less about the villain. I mean, she spends the first half of the movie running away from Captain Marvel, so she's not imposing at all. She doesn't feel like a threat. Apart from Kamala's parents, there is absolutely no jokes that land in this movie. And, and believe me, uh, they tried. Brie Larson spends the whole movie looking socially awkward to the point where I'd rather watch two Reddit mods making out. Monica Rambeau is there, and I forgot to write anything about Ms. Marvel. Thank you for watching this. Do yourself a favor and don't watch that unless you're uh, some sort of masochist. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, a big shout out to the patrons and the channel members. We have the top tiers, the knights. Of Law, Infinite Dum Dum, Puzzlebun, Flunky, David, Jax, Koss, Michael Terpia, Texas Lawman, ATS, Dagger D69, nice, Saint Nemo, Steve the Goat, Digital EXE, Nystagmus, and the Grand Admiral. And of course, thank you to Michael for renewing.
your membership. It means a lot to me. Thank you very much. A big thank you to all the tier twos, of course. Say, Dr. Melski, Yon, which has you. Canon Dog Ramachi, Mark Main, and Sensei Fang, Medic and Bias, Agent MO62, Stu Cheeks, Michael S., Rich Walwick, Kidnap Tiger, Magda and Jarek, and McLegend Face. And of course, a big thank you to each and every one of the tier ones as well. And welcoming Vladimir Koylazov to the tier one as well. Thank you very much for joining. It's a pleasure to have you, my friend. To each and every person on this list, thank you. Thank you very much. And there we go. Another day, another video. Will you join me for my next one? You better do. You little bitch. But until then, I'll see you very soon. Take care.